Good morning. We have lots going on today. I'm Mary Winters. You're watching About Senior Solutions. I'm the owner of, um, oh, you're watching Visionary Aging, actually, and I'm the owner of About Senior Solutions, and we are going to have a fun show. We have Herbie Pilati on with us today. He's going to talk about how TV mimics real life. And with that, we have a very special guest who's going to come and talk about her grandmother, who was really the the, the start of this whole idea of um, what Herbie's going to talk about. So it's like your secret. Uh, and then we also have Melinda Hughes. She's going to talk about phone density. And Stephen McCullough is going to talk about a caregiver question, or he'll ask a caregiver question. So we've got lots going on today, lots of buttons for me to push, lots of... Uh, uh, people coming on. So this is brand new, whole new world for me and hopefully a fantastic show for you. And let me go ahead and share a little bit about what we do. We are planners. Uh, we help seniors create a plan so that they can stay successfully in their home or um, any adult who is needing assistance. And I'll go ahead and show you really quickly. We have our, our little planning wheel here. So we always look at what your wishes are what you what you want for yourself, how to keep you safe, and what your finances are. And you see how that wheel has that little spinner around there. That is to make sure that we change that plan as things change around you. And so without further ado, I'm going to chat a little bit about, let's put a little twinkle in your wrinkle, actually. And I want to talk about a lovely lady um, who just turned 100. And I'm going to find her picture here. And let's see, here we go. I'm going to make her the focus of our attention here. So let's see. Oops, no, that's not what we want. We want her. And
might have to refresh actually. Let's see. Let's see if we have Steve here. I think we might have lost Steve. So we're going to go into, I'm going to go in and see if we can go ahead and talk with Melinda. Let's find Melinda. I'm going to do her little intro first, actually. And here we go. I can, can hear you. I can okay, hear good. you. I hear you. Okay, my, my, my yeah, headphones great. <laughs> disconnected like right before it was you were playing my intro and I was like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> That's fun. Technology. So, so thank you for being one of our segment hosts. This is exciting. And, thank you for um, having me. Absolutely. So tell us a little bit about your background. Um, so I started studying nutrition um whew, in my 20s just out of interest self-interest and um fell upon this method of slow strength training that we specialize at the strength in at the strength shop i'm the owner of the strength shop in pasadena and echo park and um yeah from this this method of strength training is a very effective at increasing muscle strength and bone density and overall improving cardiovascular health yeah. um so that's how I got into it as a client, but it's uh, it was developed through osteoporosis physical therapy. And I think that's what we were gonna talk about today is, is building bone density and, and the best ways to do that. Yeah, absolutely, so, absolutely. So yeah, tell us how we do that. How do we do that? <laughs> well, um, so certainly uh, weight, weight bearing exercise. So the strength training that we do at the strength shop, um, you know, it is slow. So it's safe for people who have osteoporosis. And that's the big thing is that when you're um, wanting to increase bone density with exercise, you wanna do something that's safe because if, if your osteoporosis has um, you know, it, it progressed to any certain degree, it's, your bones are gonna be a little bit more brittle, um, your joints are gonna be a little bit more fragile. And so doing something and uh, you know, movements that are extremely safe on the body mm -hmm. and very gentle mm -hmm. um, with, with low force or no force is really where it's at um, so that, that you can safely increase bone density. So the movements that we use at the strength shop were very slowly 10 seconds up lifting the weight, as you know, and 10 seconds down lowering As I know the because I do this every yeah. Thursday morning. <laughs> yeah. um, and then we move to a point um, of intensity that elicits or um, triggers bone growth. So when we lift to the intensity that we lift, um, that, that will uh, trigger osteoblasts to be released into the bloodstream and growth hormones. And that's how our body builds bone. Okay. Um, so the, the big, I guess the big thing that I always like to impress upon people is that it's never too late. Um, you know, we've had we've had people start a strength training program with us at the strength shop at age 92. It's never too late to build strong, healthy bone, sure. um, and and we can do it in a very safe way, and it can improve the quality of someone's life. You know, oh, absolutely. absolutely, quite quite a lot. Yeah. Um, so that so that's that's the big thing. With that, um, obviously, I, studying nutrition and being nutritionist, um, there are certain things we can do nutritionally to build bone. Um, and you know, the superstars uh, I always say of um, bone health are calcium and vitamin D. And certainly, when sure. someone receives a, a bone density test that shows osteopenia or osteoporosis their doctors will potentially recommend medication and uh, calcium and vitamin D supplementation. And this is where things get a little tricky because if we s supplement with a Superman dose of one or two nutrients, that's not the way the, the body can properly utilize those nutrients. 
Um, so sometimes we're not, um, especially with older adults, absorption by the gastrointestinal tract is not ideal. So in order for us to absorb a supplement, um, it has that pill or capsule has to be broken down in the correct position in the gastrointestinal tract to be properly absorbed. And sometimes that doesn't happen. So relying on supplementation, especially with capsules and pills, yeah. is not usually the most effective at providing the body those, those bone building nutrients. Um, so we're really looking at providing those nutrients within the food that we're eating. Mm -hmm. um, and beyond that, we want to provide the nutrients that are necessary to use calcium and vitamin D. So for instance, vitamin K2 is very important to bone health because it helps to push the calcium into the bones. So supplementing you know, with high doses of, of calcium and vitamin D doesn't really do what we want it to do in, in most instance, incidents, instance, instances. <laughs> Am I talking? You got it. Asking? You got it. No, it's great. Yeah. Um, so it's really about looking at providing those nutrients through food. Okay. Um, obviously, healthy whole foods are you know the best additions to a diet, and they're going to contain a lot of those nutrients in the proper um, the proper percentages. Um, the other thing is when you take a very large dose of one nutrient through a suppl supplement, sometimes your body has to use other nutrients in, in the body to process that and eliminate that excess that, that is not needed. Um, so it's, it's really important to get the correct percentages. And that happens beautifully um, through the, the you know, natu naturally through food. Whereas supplements, you know, they don't usually give you the correct percentages. Um, and a lot of times that's because of marketing. So oh, if yeah. you read the back of the bottle, right, and you see, oh, it's a thousand percent of calcium that I need, you know, that to the consumer sounds like a really good idea. It's like, yeah. oh, well, that's, I'm, I'm covered there. That sounds great. But in reality, that may not necessarily be the best thing because your body doesn't need a thousand percent of calcium. Right. So right. then it then it's going to take other nutrients to help eliminate that excess calcium that your body doesn't need. Mm -hmm. So we need the proper nutrients in the proper amounts to really um, promote bone health to really I mean to promote any overall health, but to really po promote in this case bone growth. Um, mm -hmm. We're also looking at certain lifestyle changes that people can make. Um, uh, you know, avoiding sodas with phosphoric acid that will leach uh, nutrients from the bones. Um, and one of the big things is with the overall healthy diet, I'll circle back to uh, diet and nutrition uh, before, before going on, is when we are nutrient deficient, mm -hmm. our, we need nutrients to live. So if our heart is beating and we're living, we need nutrients. And if we're not getting it from our food, our body's going to take it out of our tissues. And so if we're not providing mm -hmm. the necessary nutrients to live um, through what we're eating, um, that's when it's that's when our body's going to leach it out of our bones, out of our organs, and that's when those uh, when our bones and organs become unhealthy. So, you know, going back to the phosphoric acid in soda, if you're not eating enough nutrients in, in a given day, it, your diet may not be the healthiest. And then you're drinking soda on top of that. You're really leaching nutrients out of your bones, which are making your bones more unhealthy. So let me ask we, you a question, Linda. Is, yeah. is, is mineral water or soda water, is that does that have the same ingredient that a soda has or? It, so many people are drinking that because it doesn't have a sugar, but does that have? That? Yeah, um, I, I guess it would. Be, I don't know if like all soda. Yeah, I don't know if all soda water has phosphoric acid. I think the the, the phosphoric acid is what the problem is, <laughs> and that's that's definitely in sodas, but not normally water. Um, mm -hmm. You know, certainly the carbonation. I don't know if the carbonation is super great for your bones. I think if I were suffering from osteopenia or osteoporosis, I probably wouldn't drink um, soda water. Okay. However, it's not as bad as 
and, and it may be, you know, when we look at, when we look at the nutritional value of a soda, it may be because there is that, you know, the, the excess sugar that's also leaching, uh, which is, might be why one of it's ranked as one of the very, very bad, <laughs> the baddies yeah, of yeah. bone health. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that, that's something to look at on, I guess, each individual soda water, what's included, but if yeah. it's just carbonation, it's not going to be as bad as phosphoric acid. Great point. Um, Great thing to just look at the labels, right? Yeah. That, I mean, that's the biggest thing that you can do for your health is to really look at everything that you're eating and see, you know, as, as you read the ingredients, do you know what that ingredient is? When um, food manufacturers list the ingredients on the back of the labels, they don't disguise real food with their, you know, chemical names. So if you see, you know, you're looking at, um, I don't know, <laughs> now, like if you're looking at a, a milk carton in each, sure. um, sometimes it'll say milk and then sometimes it'll say milk and like all these other preservatives. And so, um, you know, you want, you want to, even, even the food that we don't think has a bunch of added crap to it for lack of a better word does. And so it's really important to look at what you're eating and make sure that you know that everything that's going into your body, um, other lifestyle changes that really affect our bone health is smoking, oh, um, sure. consuming alcohol. Mm -hmm. um, some people are taking medications where um, a, a side effect can be bone loss. Mm -hmm. And so um, it's really important, I think, when, when as we age and, and we have medications for one thing or another, that we really understand what the side effects are for those medications. And Absolutely. if there's a side effect such as bone, uh, bone loss, we can, you know, make sure that you're eating healthy, make sure you're engaged in a strength training program so you can combat that. Or if something like osteoporosis runs in your family and it's something that you're concerned about, you can talk to your doctor about maybe there's another way to treat your health issue that isn't about taking that specific medication with that specific side effect. So, really taking an active role in, in your health and what, what am I putting into my body and what effect is it having? I think um, understanding your genetics too, because if you have a genetic disposition for some of those things in particular um, osteoporosis that we're talking about, I think looking at what kind of food you need to include or, or change from your diet helps you when you're in your 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s. Yeah. Um, so that it doesn't become that enormous issue. I have a friend whose sister is very physical. And so as far as the strength training and the things that she does herself, uh, she has a ranch and she's, she just works out so hard. And she had a fall and broke her hip so badly, but apparently um, osteoporosis runs in her family. So yeah. it's certainly something for all the nieces and nephews too to be thinking about and how they how they manage their health and osteoporosis too yeah any time there's anything that's happened in your lineage it's really that's really something that should be put on a list of like yeah. okay well now this is something that i should be concerned about because exactly. our cells came from those people our genes came from those people so exactly exactly um and and typically another contributing factor to that is if my parents have raised me, not only do I have their genetics, but I'm also usually exercising in the same way. I'm usually eating the same type of diet. I'm usually right. living the same way. And that's going to create a similar effect if, you know, sure. not exactly the same, but. Sure. Similar. No, but it's environmental so. and genetic. So mm -hmm. whether, whatever your percentage that you take from your environment or your um, your genetics. We know that we can't change our genetics, but we can certainly change our environment. So yeah, and that's them. important. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, super important to to really, I think, impress on on the viewers that it's never too late. You yeah. know, the earlier you start, the better, because the more enjoyable an exercise program is, the earlier you start, or the more enjoyable, you, you know, if you start to really focus on your diet and really look at the, at the nutrition of your foods earlier, it's, you, you can, it's, it's more enjoyable to, to live in that enhanced health, Absolutely. but it's never too late. It's right. never too late. Right. 
Molly DeHughes, owner of the Strength Shop Pasadena and Highland Park, Echo Park, Echo Park. Echo Park, All Pasadena right. and Echo Park. Well, we look forward to having you come back next week and give us another yeah, me too. Of great information. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Thanks. Happy 4th of July. <laughs> yeah, you too. Thank you so much. We'll see you soon. And we're going to jump. I think Steve is back with us. We're going to go ahead and get him back on with us. And um, I'm so glad we've got so many things going today. Steve, Stephen, you fell off the face of the earth. So I think Herbie did too. So we'll have to see if we can get Herbie back also. Um, but we will keep going because we have um, we have Myla on with us too, who is going to talk about her grandma and some of the great things that she did as a nurse. But tell me about your caregiver question or ask me your caregiver question. Can you hear me? Oh, no, you're not muted. Can't hear you. I cannot hear you. I'm going to refresh really fast and see if that changes our broadcast here. Um, that might just cancel everything out. So let's see. Oh, I don't know. Steven, I can't hear you. Nope. So text me your caregiver question. Text me your caregiver question and then and then we'll see if I can bring you back. All right. So in the meantime, I think we're we're having all kinds of technical issues. <laughs> we just have a lot of people on the show. So let me go ahead and I'm going to bring on Myla Twilly. I really wanted Herbie to come in and talk about um, the segment with us. But we're going to go ahead and bring in Myla. And we're going to talk a little bit about what we were going to talk about with Herbie. And But I love Myla. I love you. Hey, Hi, Mary. How are you? I'm awesome. How are you? Fantastic. So Herbie was going to come on with us today. He was on just a little while ago and he dropped off the program. So hopefully he'll be back. But what he was going to do, he's going to have a regular segment on. And he's had some fantastic programs as well as written several books. First one with um, Elizabeth Montgomery, remember Bewitch, Christina knows? Yeah, yeah. They're very good friends with her. Mm -hmm. um, but he he wrote a, a story recently about Diane Carroll and um, the show that she was in on um, Julia. And mm -hmm. uh, so this beautiful African-American woman showing an example to the rest of the world that she was a career woman and a mom and, um, but, you know, I, I started talking with him and I said, you know, Herbie, I have the real live Julia that I work with. <laughs> and she so impressed me. Um, tell me a little bit about your grandma and um, her real live Julia story. Yeah, my grandmother, Mrs. Huletta Bryant, she was um, mm -hmm. born in Arkansas, in England, Arkansas. But her family moved to California to Pasadena in nineteen like twenty two or so. Uh -huh. So she was two. She was the oldest of five children, um, and very bright, very driven early on, um, gifted in music. However, her passion was nursing. So she came along at a time in Pasadena where. Pasadena High School and Pasadena City College were basically one. So her transitioning from high school into college, um, to the junior college system, um, is where she, you know, got her her AA. She got all of her um, bachelor's requirements done then, and. Interestingly enough, my grandmother was accepted to UCLA. And at the time, it was like $26. Wow. Right? Yeah. Her family couldn't afford to do it. That's a lot of money then. Right. So she was not able to go to UCLA. Um, years later, I was accepted to UCLA, went to UCLA, really because she couldn't go. Um, so I decided to, I, that's the school that I chose. Um, but my grandmother did go on to nursing school. She got, um, what's the first one? Uh, I guess it's like the equivalent of a CNA sort of okay, sure. licensing. Um, her LVN, that's what she got first. Her mm -hmm. LVN, 
from PCC. And then she went on to Cal State LA. She got her bachelor's. By the time I was born, so when she did that, she had five children. Wow, I can't even imagine. Um, she was an early grandmother. My, my aunt had children. So she was a grandma, a mom, and um, black woman, obviously, you know, living in California, I'm sure there were a lot more privileges, mm -hmm. but it was still the time that it was, you know, you're thinking 1940s and 50s. Mm -hmm. And then she went on to Pepperdine mm -hmm. and she got her master's in public health. And at that point I was born, I, um, I was, I was born, I think, right when she was getting her master's. So her thesis okay. that she did, she used me at being the infant as her oh, research. Oh, and so okay. it's about a lot of the, her study is based on me. And um, you know, I read an, through her thesis and there's not a lot that's changed as far as some no, of the disparities and some of the things that she wrote about. So mm -hmm. very, very wise, uh, very yes. feminine. And I just was always impressed with her. It was kind of interesting. I, I don't know, you know, well, I have, I, I, my, I am constantly teased because my friends and family know that I don't know the difference between my right and my left. I'm ambidextrous and um, she was the same way. And she said, I, I asked her to hold a, a set a piece of paper uh, on the floor with her left hand, something like that. And she kind of thought about it for a second. And she, she kind of did this, or she did this, actually. Mm -hmm. said, yeah, she did this. Do this. Yeah. Yep. And I that said, what, what are you doing? And she said, well, I, I I have to think about the difference between my right and my left. And I'm like, mm -hmm. really? And so with, it, with nursing in particular, because you had to put an IV in, or you were surgically looking at one right or left yes. side or something that way. So she always, which I think is brilliant, because you're really doubly thinking about what yes. you have to do for someone. But I thought, oh, I'm going to do that for the rest of my life. <laughs> right, right. Like, really I mean, and that. it's funny because she literally did that for the rest of her life. I mean, up until the very, I mean, that was, she always had to think of it. And let's see, I know after, so she worked for um, LA, for, for General Hospital here yeah. in Los Angeles. Um, she ran, she was the, you know, the charge nurse or the head nurse for, the uh, maternal infant um, wing and, and their care. Uh -huh. um, and then she also taught by the time I was, let's say three, four, five. And in that range, I was going with her to her classes where she taught night school. For many nurses who were probably studying just like she was, I would imagine that they were probably new mommies, right. that they, you know, were you know, starting on the path that she had already trailblazed through. Exactly. Um, she, one of her, let's see. Okay, so this is interesting. Her best friend, Gladys Jakes, they were both nurses in the program, but Gladys was younger than her, but ahead of her. Okay. 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 So Gladys sort of ushered her in. They became really tight friends. Gladys was my godmother. Oh, great. Um, our families are still close. I talk to her daughter all the time. They are both founding members of the Los Angeles Council of Black Nurses, which at the time, that. even though the council, there are chapters, uh -huh. at the time of the founding, though, they were technically the first chapter. So there is some confusion because, like, you'll talk to a nurse and maybe they're from D.C. and they're like, no, they're not the founders, but it's like, they're not necessarily of all of the, you know, because these councils operate independently, more or less. Right, right. But they're the first one. And then everyone else sort of copied or, you know, prototype. They were the prototype for the organization. Nice. So um, when she passed, I was able to contact them. Um, she, it was, it's, well, now there's only one living person of that founding group. 
Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, they immediately reached out. They participated in her services. They, you know, and there were so many nurses. And then get this, Mary, a friend of mine was dating a nurse. Uh-huh. He happens to talk to my friend about my grandmother. Like he's telling her like, yeah, this lady just passed. And, you know, she was at, like, he goes into this whole spill and she's like, wow, like this story sounds so similar to my friend's grandmother. And it turned out that he was talking about my grandmother. Wow, so, that's amazing. It's pretty cool. It um, is amazing. Yeah, and yes. I remember the people who were there to honor your grandmother too. And at some point it was a great honor. She lived this fabulous, amazing life, raised five children, um, worked, she was kind of the head of the household too. But, yes. Um, and got her master's degree with all the children. I can completely uh, relate to that. I got my master's and my children were in high school. Um, okay. But, but I got the honor of being with her to work with you guys to put a care plan together, which was yes. really amazing. And the insight that she had in wanting certain things for her own care plan was also really fantastic. So she was part of that whole idea of the wishes. And I remember also when she said, I cannot do a reverse mortgage. Uh, I think she was like 92 at the time. And she said, mm-hmm. I can't do a reverse mortgage because the money will only last about four or five years. And I kind of went, whoa, 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 whoa wait a minute. Yeah. And she said, my mom lived to be 100. And I went, wow, OK. All right. 104. So oh, 104. My yeah. mother lived to she be 104. I, and she said, I need a 10-year plan. I need a 10-year plan. And went, OK, we'll put a 10-year plan together for you. So yeah. ah, I just love her. She's amazing. And we love you because, Uh I mean, your help in that process. I'm a grandchild. So normally, you know, it goes from generation to generation as far as care. And so for me, I was completely like deer in the headlights, didn't know what I was supposed to do, how to do it. And you were instrumental the best thing that ever happened was I called my godmother. She gave me the number to an attorney who said they couldn't help me, but gave me your number. Yeah. And it was, I mean, from there on, it was incredible. Uh, my grandmother so enjoyed you. Oh. Uh, and whenever there was a problem, you know, we'd be talking, discussing like, okay, well, I'll have to contact Mary. She's like, yes, contact me. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, yeah. Uh, in our gang, we love about senior solutions and mm-hmm. i think that the work that you do first of all i don't even know that there's anybody else like you around you know because whenever i talk about it to people they're like really like mm-hmm. there's there's you know you could do that i'm like yeah absolutely and uh it's great because now it's it's time for me to start more planning with my parents first my mom and eventually my dad i'm sure so um i highly recommend uh looking into where i mean you know since this is in the world of internet it could be anywhere right but look for those resources because yeah it's easier right we just want to make it easy on people it's not uh it's not a fun uh, or easy transition or process to go through. And, and it doesn't even matter how old you are. I think about my friends whose children go off to college and without a HIPAA release or some of the things that you really need, a POA or a uh, the healthcare directive, if you don't have those forms in place now, we've become such a litigious uh, society that without that, we're kind of stuck from being able to help the people that we love. Mm-hmm. Too. So planning at any age is really, really important. And um, staying in control. So when you have a plan, then you have more choices. You have, you know, you, you want to have more choices and you want to be in control. Yes, where you are. absolutely. So thank you. Thank You're you so welcome. Thank I appreciate you. that. So I wish that Herbie was on with us. And I think we're going to have to figure out a, a different new way to, to bring everybody in because we had so many people on today. But I'm going to go ahead and wrap up. Okay. And, um, and your grandma, the real live Julia, um, we'll just go ahead and we'll put their pictures, even though, well, Diane Carroll wasn't a nurse, but we think that she kind of <laughs> grandmother really helped to drive that whole idea of the program. And yep. um, we are so grateful for the work that she did and the trailblazer of a woman that she is, too. We 
she really needs to be recognized for that. So thank you so much. And thank you. Enjoy your 4th of July weekend. You too. And we'll be connecting soon. All right. Sounds great. great. <laughs> okay. Thanks. Thanks everybody for a great show. I'm sorry we had a few people drop off here, some of our, our specialists, our, our guests, but um, we will figure this out for next week and have a great program for you. So have a great 4th of July.